Hey guys, so today I'm finally back with my book related video. A lot of you guys have been asking me when are you going to film book related videos again? Um, I'm so flattered that you guys enjoy them and some of you have been snapping me pictures and videos of your books that you bought inspired by my book haul so that's so fun for me to see. So I'm doing a reading wrap up this time. These are the books that I have read through a course of months. I'm not gonna go in depth, I'm just gonna tell you if I like the book or not, would I recommend it uh, or not. So the first book is by Francois Sagan. It's called Bonjour Tristesse. And I hated this book. I hated it so much that I just wanna get rid of this book. It was absolutely horrible. I would give it one one and a half stars out of five. I just couldn't bear the book basically. So it's about um, a very privileged daughter living with her father in the French Riviera. Well, I'm gonna read the description for you guys. The French Riviera, home to beautiful people and none are more beautiful than Cécile, a precious 17 year old and her father Raymond, a vivacious libertine charming, decadent, and irresponsible. The golden skin duo are dedicated to a life of free love, fast cars, and hedonistic pleasures. So you get the gist. It's a very vain and superficial world and book. But then one long hot summer, Raymond decides to marry and Cecile and her lover feel compelled to take a hand in his armors with tragic consequences. So it's basically about this teenager, Cecile. She's quite rebellious. She's so unlikable. You just, when you read the book, you just, you cannot relate to the girl. You cannot get to like her. She's so ugh, like, you read the book and you think, what the hell, girl? It's under a hundred pages and it just doesn't evolve into anything. It's like supposedly a tragic story. There is a tragic element in it, but it's so... It's a very selfish world. When you read the book, you think all those people are so selfish, so superficial, so vain, no depth to their character. It's just a very trashy piece of literature, in my opinion. <laughs> Sorry, that's just my opinion, but I hated the book. Another one is by J.K. Rowling. It's The Tales of Beetle the Bard. So if you are a hardcore Harry Potter fan, you'll definitely be aware of this book. It is a book that was left to Hermione by Dumbledore in his will. And uh, these are basically fairy tales for wizard children. So, uh, and muggles also, but basically, most of the children who study in Hogwarts, they are acquainted to these fairy tales. So they're like magical world fairy tales. We would grow up with fairy tales like Cinderella, the Three Little Pigs. I mean, the classic fairy tales, Pinocchio and stuff. So these are kind of equivalent of our classical fairy tales for the wizarding world. Like all the fairy tales, they are meant to teach you something. But the last fairy tale, the tale of three brothers is very important to the books. And uh, you know, it's kind of, it all makes sense. The symbolism of the fairy tale um, relates to, to the whole story of Harry Potter. And what does it say here? It says, the Tales of Beetle the Bard contains five richly diverse fairy tales each with its own magical character that will variously bring delight, laughter, and the thrill of mortal peril. So yeah, there actually are illustrations in the book. Like this one right here. Yeah, so it's just a very beautiful little book. If you are a Harry Potter fan, it's also a very quick read. Again, under 100 pages and such a little joy to read some magical fairy tales. Then we've got Romeo and Juliet. A very, very beautiful edition. This is a leather bound edition by Barnes & Noble. Probably my favorite edition of books. And it has silver, like silver edges. I enjoyed reading this so much. Um, I've read excerpts from Romeo and Juliet uh, at school and then at university. We studied Shakespeare, but we didn't go in depth analyzing Romeo and Juliet. We were analyzing other plays, but we didn't touch this one, maybe because it's too well known and too classic. I think this might actually be the first time that I read the book cover to cover, 
um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And I loved it. It's a crazy love story. I don't know why it's so romanticized because it's not romantic at all. It's weird and absurd and, you know, they die in the end and it's not romantical at all. The way they fall in love without really knowing each other, like it's it's crazy, a crazy love story. Of course it's Shakespeare, so there's a lot of humor, absurd and comedy in it. And the, the, the last scene is <laughs> it's just hilarious. I mean, I guess everyone knows the last Romeo and Juliet dying scene. Not as pretty and romantic as some people who haven't read it think. Okay, the next book is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. I never know how to pronounce his last name correctly. The Alchemist is another classic. Actually, these books are really skinny, so they're very quick reads. This one is 166 pages. I read it in Lithuanian. Um, actually, would love to read it in English as well to see how they compare. Um, the cover is so beautiful as well as a hardback. It's a must have in your book collection because this book is gonna change your life. It's gonna blow you away. And I've mentioned it in my favorites. I literally took a highlighter and highlighted almost every second page. It's just a wise book. The book is about Spanish shepherd Santiago who has been shepherd for years and he does the exact same thing every day. He doesn't really see anything besides his sheep and he loves his sheep, but he wants something more from his life. So one day he decides to sell all his sheep. He goes on a journey looking for his personal legend. He meets a king, a medium, a thief, a beggar, poor man, a shopkeeper on the way and they all uh, tell him something. They all lead him to the next step. It's very interesting. It's so, everything is so beautifully written. I think Paula is an incredible storyteller. You cannot put the book down. Once you start reading about Santiago's story, you just want to know what's gonna happen next. And I feel like the book is very diverse. It's very appreciative of all the cultures, religions. Um, yeah, it's gonna teach you a lot. It highlights the importance of your own personal legend. Uh, so to say your own personal dream or goal in life that if you have a dream you have to go for it you have to do everything i was staying up all night reading the book i couldn't put it down there is everything involved in it self-discovery um love loyalty trust so many things involved in this book friendship like helping others highly highly recommend that you guys read the book okay next up we have a massive book compared to the other ones this is pretty big it's the thickest harry potter book 766 pages harry potter and the order of phoenix the fifth book in the series and i loved it um i'm not gonna tell you anything about it because it's harry potter i'm sure almost everyone has read Harry Potter books, right? If you are grown up and you think you are too old to read Harry Potter, you are not. You have to read it. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it so much. It, when I start reading Harry Potter, I kind of put it down. It, I just get into that world and I want to stay there. I just don't want to face reality. I just want to be in that beautiful, magical world. Uh, the Order of Phoenix is where... It's getting kind of dark. The horrible and disgusting Dolores Umbridge becomes the headmistress of um, Hogwarts. As the name suggests, the Order of Phoenix gets formed in the book um, to protect Hogwarts from the dark forces of Voldemort. Also, Harry, along with many other students, form uh, Dumbledore's army. So it there is a lot going on in this book. It's a very thick, information-heavy, detail-heavy book. Nothing like the movies. I mean, if you've seen the movie and you think you know it all, not at all. Please read the book because it has so much detail, so much stuff that's not in the movies. I mean, you cannot cram a book like this into a movie, right? And I know many people don't consider this as one of their favorite books in the series, but it has to be one of my personal favorites. I love the Goblet of Fire and I love the Order of Phoenix as well. I just... I think it's so full of beautiful description, especially the House of Sirius Black at the beginning of the book. I loved reading that. It was so mesmerizing 
J.K. Rowling's writing is absolutely mind-blowing and you know the description of the house was so realistic and so mysterious and dark and you just I just wanted to be in that house and discover it myself so yeah loads going on in the book absolutely amazing so glad I read it I'm at the moment I'm not reading the six I'm reading the um, cursed child because I'm going to London tomorrow to see that play the day after tomorrow so I I want to read the book while traveling on the buses and the planes before I actually see the play and I'm sure it's gonna be amazing so I'm very very excited about that probably by the time you're watching this video I will have read the book so I will let you know if I liked it in my next book related video the other book I read is a very popular book at the moment it's the life-changing magic of not giving a fuck by Sarah Knight this might sound controversial but I didn't like the book at all I would give it two and a half stars out of five if I was being generous I would just give it two stars there is some good advice but overall as a book I didn't like it at all I know a lot of people love it praise the book it's all over the place now everyone seems to be either reading or getting the book and I don't regret that I have read it but it was a bit of a waste of time. To me, it sounded very pretentious. The word fuck is mentioned at least 10 times per page. So it gets very repetitive and very annoying and you just don't want to see this word anymore because it's in on every single page so many times. Basically about how you should not give a fuck about anything and you should live your life for yourself. This is meant to teach you how not to be afraid to say no to things you don't want to do. It's says how to stop spending time you don't have doing things you don't want to do with people you don't like. So this is what the book is, is essentially about. It seems like she doesn't care about other people's feelings at all, not even when it comes to family, like, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, family gatherings, baby showers, those kinds of things. And she's like, just don't give a fuck about those say no and i'm like dude but you know there are things that matter in life for me family is very important so i just didn't appreciate reading that i was like mm, no doesn't really sound like anything that i would do there were a couple of pages where you can make up lists so she gives example of her own list and then you should make a list of things i may or may not give a fuck about so on this side you write the things you don't give a fuck about so mine would be kale sports games um being a morning person eco-friendly plastic bags 50 shades of gray kardashians and the things i do give a fuck about so yoga motivational people coffee harry potter arts that kind of stuff so you basically make those lists and there were a couple uh examples and the lists for you that you could make them there were a couple of tests but generally i feel like she's pushing her views she's very close-minded on some subjects that you know things that she doesn't give a fuck about she sounds very close-minded about them and yeah i just feel like it was very pretentious that's the best word i can use to describe the book some people yeah they need more encouragement and they need to have their eyes open maybe if you, you are that kind of person the book might work for you there there are some good things good paragraphs that i liked you know as an overall book it's a no-no for me and the last book i read is by roald dahl and it's called the witches which is a classic children's book which i've never read um as a child because I was reading like Astrid Lindgren, I mean other kinds of books. I never read Roald Dahl as a child and I want to read all of his books now. It's about this little boy whose grandmother, she tells him that, you know, every woman is a witch and he generally believes that and it's, it's just really funny. It's magical realism. It says, real witches, they're the most dangerous creatures in the world. The worst thing is that you cannot differentiate them from <laughs> normal women. So how do you recognize them? Once you've read this book, you will know all the secrets of witches. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have to run to the post office now and I'll see you soon. Bye.